Greetings, learners. This is the Kenyan teacher. It is our pleasure to present a special series that we call Chemistry of Gases. Most of chemical reactions that we shall do in high school chemistry will produce gases. It is because of this that we have decided to take you through the preparation procedures and uses of all gases discussed in high school chemistry syllabus. To guide our presentations on these discussions, we shall subdivide the gases in the following groups. We shall have gases at Form 1 level. We shall also have gases at Form 2. We will have a presentation on gases in sulfur and its compounds. Another presentation shall be made on gases in nitrogen and its compounds, followed by gases in chlorine and its compounds. And finally, we shall have a discussion on organic gases. This video presents gases in sulfur and its compounds. Welcome and stay on with the Kenyan teacher until the end of the video. So gases discussed in the topic sulfur and its compounds include hydrogen sulfide, sulfur 4 oxide and sulfur 6 oxide. We shall begin with the first gas hydrogen sulfide. So, as agreed in our introductions, let's have a look at how hydrogen sulfide can be prepared. So, the gas is prepared from the reaction between a metal sulfide and a dilute acid. For our discussion, we shall use ion 2 sulfide as the metal sulfide but for dilute acids we shall have hydrochloric acid and we shall also write an equation for that reaction which occurs when you use dilute sulfuric 6 acid so in the case of hydrochloric acid we obtain the gas hydrogen sulfide together with ion 2 chloride as aqueous. We balance the equation then with a 2 on our dilute hydrochloric acid. Now, we can also use the same sulfide, ion 2 sulfide, with dilute sulfuric 6 acid, where we shall obtain our gas, hydrogen sulfide, together with ion 2 sulfate. This second equation balances itself out and therefore we do not need to balance. Now to the setups. In the first setup, we are using dilute hydrochloric acid and ion 2 sulfide just as discussed previously. So we shall introduce the dilute hydrochloric acid through a thistle funnel into a flat bottomed flask that has ion 2 sulfide. Once we obtain our gas hydrogen sulfide, we shall pass it through water. This water at this point is supposed to absorb to supposed to absorb what we normally call acid sprays or acid fumes from the generator. 
Once the acid fumes have been removed from the gas, we shall collect it, of course, a, a wet sample of it because we've not dried it in the gas jar. And as you can see, the method used is downward delivery. This is possible because the gas is slightly denser than air. In our second setup, we are using similar chemicals, that is dilute hydrochloric acid. This time we are using a dropping funnel and our ion 2 sulfide is in a flat bottomed flask. We are not removing acid fumes because we are using over water method of gas collection. But I want you to take note that we are using warm water. We are using warm water because hydrogen sulfide is fairly soluble in cold water, but it is almost insoluble in warm water. So in these two instances, we are collecting dry sample of hydrogen sulfide. If we need it dry, then we shall pass it through a U-tube that is packed with anhydrous calcium chloride drying agent. We are not using concentrated sulfuric 6 acid to dry the gas because there would be a reaction between the gas and sulfuric 6 acid. And that is why we don't use the acid for drying. The reaction would be as follows. Our hydrogen sulfide would be oxidized to sulfur and sulfuric 6 acid reduced to water. The equation would be balanced with a 3 on hydrogen sulfide, a 4 on sulfur and another 4 on water. And that does it for the production of hydrogen sulfide. As we conclude on the gas, we mentioned that hydrogen sulfide is primarily used to produce elemental sulfur. Once we have obtained elemental sulfur from hydrogen sulfide, then we can go ahead and use sulfur to do, among other things, vulcanize rubber or in the contact process to produce sulfuric 6 acid. We are through with the lab preparation, the setups and uses of hydrogen sulfide gas. We now proceed to sulfur 4 oxide gas. For sulfur 4 oxide gas, in as far as lab preparation procedures are concerned, we have around four methods we can use to prepare the gas. One is burning sulfur in air where our sulfur would be oxidized to obtain sulfur for oxide. Just as simple as that. Other than burning sulfur in air, we can also obtain sulfur for oxide through what we call roasting of a metal sulfide in air. And here we have quite a number of sulfides we can use. The first one is what we normally call iron pyrite with that formula. If we burn it in air, we obtain iron 3 oxide we also obtain our gas, sulfur, four oxide gas. Of course, we balance eight on the gas, two on the oxide of iron, 11 on oxygen, and four on our iron pyrite. This is the common name. The other sulfide we can use is what we call zinc blend. This is zinc sulfide being heated in excess oxygen and we get zinc oxide together with sulfur for oxide. Balancing with a 2 on the oxide, a 2 on zinc oxide, a 3 on oxygen, 
number two on our zinc blend. That is the common name for zinc sulfide. We may also have what we call galena lead sulfide. When you roast it in air, we get lead oxide and some sulfur for oxide gas. Balanced with a 2 on the oxide, a 2 on lead oxide, a 3 on oxygen, and a 2 on our galena. Method 3 would involve oxidizing a metal using concentrated sulfuric 6 acid. So here, the metal we are oxidizing is copper, and we introduce concentrated sulfuric 6 acid via this dropping funnel. Once our gas has been obtained, we shall pass it through concentrated sulfuric 6 acid to dry it. And then finally, we collect a dry sample in a gas jar by the downward delivery method. The equation for the reaction would be copper metal reacting with concentrated sulfuric 6 acid to get copper 2 sulfate to get water and sulfur 4 oxide gas. Of course we balance with a 2 on water and a 2 on the concentrated sulfuric 6 acid. And now to our last option when it comes to preparing sulfur for oxide. This would involve reacting a suitable sulfite with an acid. Our sulfite here would be that of sodium and we shall use dilute hydrochloric acid. Again, we shall dry our gas by passing through concentrated sulfuric 6 acid and we collect dry sample in a gas jar via the downward delivery method. The equation for the reaction this time is sodium sulfite reacting with dilute hydrochloric acid this would give sodium chloride water and our gas sulfur for oxide. This time we shall balance with a 2 on sodium chloride and a 2 on dilute hydrochloric acid. It is good to mention here that out of the four methods that we have just gone through, we commonly use method three and four. That is oxidation of a metal using concentrated sulfuric 6 acid or reaction between a suitable sulfite with an acid. We now look at uses of sulfur 4 oxide. Sulfur 4 oxide is mainly used as an intermediate during the manufacture of sulfuric 6 acid in the contact process. Intermediate means that we further oxidize it to sulfur 6 oxide which then gives us the acid. Sulfur 4 oxide is also used to make calcium hydrogen sulfite, which is a bleaching agent in paper industry. We use the gas as a preservative in jam and fruit juices and also as a disinfectant. We finally proceed to our last gas in gases under sulfur and its compounds. And this is sulfur 6 oxide. For lab preparation, we shall mention that sulfur 6 oxide is obtained from catalytic oxidation of sulfur 4 oxide. 
we oxidize sulfur oxide in presence of catalyst here the catalyst that we can have is vanadium 5 oxide or platinum set up we have dry sulfur oxide and oxygen getting in to a combustion tube that has been packed with platinum in the form of platinized asbestos we shall heat and our sulfur four oxide would be oxidized in presence of the catalyst to form sulfur six oxide of course we shall balance two on sulfur four oxide and two on sulfur six oxide later on we shall realize that this reaction is reversible so when we receive the gas we subject it to some cold environment where it quickly forms a solid the solid is having a very high affinity for moisture so we protect it from moisture using calcium chloride that has been packed in our YouTube on the far right. We now look at other methods available for preparation of sulfur 6 oxide. First one being decomposition of sodium hydrogen sulfate. So when we decompose sodium hydrogen sulfate, this should be solid we get sodium sulfate we get water and we get our sulfur six oxide gas balanced with a two on sodium hydrogen sulfate apart from decomposing sodium hydrogen sulfate sulfur six oxide may also be obtained by heating concentrated sulfuric 6 acid with large excess phosphorus 5 oxide. In this reaction, our sulfuric 6 acid, of course concentrated, reacts with the phosphorus 5 oxide and we obtain a compound here with the formula HPO3. This would be aqueous together with our gas sulfur 6 oxide we balance with a 2 on hpo3 finally we can get sulfur 6 oxide through distilling oleum h2 s2 o7 when we heat carefully and we collect the sulfur 6 oxide in a very dry receiver we are able to get it of course when we also put the receiver to freezing to freezing temperatures so these are the other three methods available for preparation of sulfur 6 oxide gas we end our video by looking at uses of sulfur 6 oxide sulfur 6 oxide is basically used in the industrial manufacture of sulfuric 6 acid contact process dear students we have come to the end of our video where we have reviewed gases in sulfur and its compounds make sure to join us in the other categories of gases as mentioned in the introduction to this video thanks for your time and we ask that you continue to keep it the kenyan teacher for more of such reviews